And sometimes uh, depression can sit and can seep in on you. Amen. So quick Amen. and so subtle. Amen. When you give out all, your all. That's it. Amen. That's it. Your all. And, Amen. and you meet opposition. And the only thing you want to do is glorify the king. The only thing that you want to do is be pleasing in God's sight. And I, I'm going to be transparent today. Today I told my wife, I said, I don't even want to go to church. I say that. And I understand that. But for the most part, it's hard for me, for me to see that you feel that way. Right. And you look, you should like it. Because I don't see you pouring out. The Bible says you will tell the tree by the fruit that it's bad. Where is your fruit? Now, this will be an ouch message if you take it as an ouch. Mm -hmm. Take it as whatever it is, yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. Where is your fruit? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What can you point to as fruit? Mm -hmm. So when you say that I ain't coming, mm -hmm. guess what? Mm -hmm. You just stay in the bed. Amen. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I can't just stay in the bed. That's right. If I amass well, because you guys saw fit for me to have it, guess what? I will be ridiculed. Oh, you're going down there, you're a folder. They ain't feeding this and the people ain't giving that and that. They ain't doing that and they ain't doing that. The life of the preacher and the life of the pastor, the one who pours into people's soul, is a thing, a thankless life and a lifestyle. That today I decided to preach to myself. I, I just said okay, but I came out and uh, yeah, I had this message already, uh, already together. I came out and I, you know, I said what I said in terms of we were talking about trying to spot at eleven o'clock and it's eleven o eleven seven, uh, ten minutes after eleven and. Then you say, what time are we going to start? I said, 11 o'clock. But it was 10 minutes after 11. Yes, it was. So, I said, I'm going to preach to myself. Amen. Because I need to encourage me. Amen. So, so uh, you can follow along for the journey. Or you can do what some of you do in a way. Text. Check out, do whatever. Because I can't stop whatever you doing. Amen. Only thing that I'm, I can stop is what I'm doing. Right. And I can't come off the wall. Amen. I just can't because my calling is to the wall. Amen. I have to be vigilant. Yes. Somebody's life is dependent on me. Amen. Staying on the wall. Amen. It is. So go now to Matthew chapter 13. Begin with uh, verse 18 to 23. Matthew chapter 13, begin with 18, 23, and then reads as follow. It says, Therefore, hear the parable of the soul. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Look where is that? It's in his heart. Amen. This is he who receives seed by the wayside, but he who receives seed on stony place, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For he, when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and, care, and the cares of the world uh, and the deceitfulness of the riches 
choke the word and he become unfruitful. Never say the word becomes unfruitful, but he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word, understands it, and who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And you look what it says, and you watch this. He started at the top at a hundred, he went down. Because everybody won't produce a bountiful harvest. Go over now to to uh, first John. Chapter three. Twenty. Twenty one. It says this. For the, our heart condemns us. God is greater than our heart. He knows all things. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask and receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. I just want to talk to you a little bit about don't let the cares compromise your confidence. Talking to me and that's right, if I don't right, know right. it, that's fine. Don't let the cares compromise. Jeff, do not let the cares compromise your confidence in God. You can't let the cares, Jeff, compromise your confidence in God. You have to stand on what God has already promised you. Jeff, don't let the cares. Compromise your confidence in God. Amen. Don't let people, That's right. Thank you, Lord. don't let problems, yes. don't let situations, yes. don't let the cares of this world compromise Jesus. your confidence right. in God. Right. Right. What is compromise? Compromise means the setup. Or expose one to scandal or suspicion. Compromise will make you vulnerable to perceive impending danger. Compromise often strikes a severe blow to the core value of you as a Christian and the very tenets of your faith. Compromise is a noticeable shift from your original position or a noticeable modification from what you once knew as truth. All right. To what is believed now as true. Yeah. This is what it says. Compromise is when you knew something as true, but now you compromise and you think what you know now becomes true. Right. Right. Uh, it is what it says. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But here's what here's what Gandhi says about. Compromise. He says that all compromise is based on give and take. Mm, but right. there can be no give and take on the fundamentals of God. Mm -hmm. Any compromise on the fundamentals of God is to surrender the idea of God being non-existent and to deny the power of God thereof. Mm, all right. For some of you, it's all give and no take. Yeah, that right, Pastor. And then there are some of you who was all take and no give. Amen. Don't give up your time. Don't give up your talent. Don't give up your treasure. Remember, I'm talking to me. I ain't talking to nobody out here. This word don't apply to nobody out here. Today, I'm preaching to me. Sometimes, come on my heaven, you want to don't give nothing. Always taking from the grace of God, but never spending time with the giver of God's grace. Yes, yes. For we as Christians must never compromise on those things which we know about God. John 8 and 
32 says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He didn't say that you shall be set free, but you shall be made free. I know the New Living Translation says that you may be set free, but what I've discovered about the things when you set free, you can come and snare again simply because once the sun set free, you're free indeed. You never go back to compromise. 